Hey lovers, what it do? So happy to be, oh wait. Yeah, thank you very much. So happy to be back in business here on Uncensored News. Real news you could use. No cap. Now today we're going to be covering Will and Jada's divorce, Netflix being criminally indicted, and a shark with a heart. Aww. I'm your host, Steph Lover, reminding you to download that Uncensored Network TV app and take us with you. All right? Because you don't want to miss nothing, especially the headlines. As if you didn't know... The super spreader, better known as President Trump, has coronavirus. This shit is real. This shit is really real. It is. And so do at least 34 people that came in contact with him or attended the Rose Garden ceremony to officially nominate uh, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. She's no RBG. Uh, to the Supreme Court. So far, let's see who we got. We got his wife, Melania. Uh, she has it along with Hope Hicks, the advisor to the president. Stephen Miller, that's a 45 speechwriter, and the same guy whose idea was to put immigrant kids in cages. What do you know? The White House press secretary, Kaylee, uh, Kellyanne Conway, a couple of senators, a governor, an admiral, a member of the press, and a whole bunch of other white people. Damn near everybody <laughs> except Trump's old campaign manager, this guy Brad Parcell. He just resigned amid allegations of domestic abuse and mental instability. It's the guy that ran his whole campaign in 2006. But look on the bright side, at least he doesn't have COVID. So just to recap, the Donald went to Walter Reed, staged a fake photo shoot, had some oxygen to the face, did a drive-by, made his doctor lie, got loopy off some experimental steroid medication, and then had the nerve to tell us, don't let it dominate your life. Nigga, you dominate in our life with all this bullshit. Go to the videotape, B. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went. I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. We have the greatest country in the world. We're going back. We're going back to work. We're going to be out front. As your leader, I had to do that. I knew there's danger to it, but I had to do it. I stood out front. I led. Nobody that's a leader would not do what I did. And I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. But don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there. Be careful. We have the best medicines in the world, and it all happened very shortly, and they're all getting approved, and the vaccines are coming momentarily. Thank you very much. And Walter Reed, what a group of people. Thank you very much. So now he's immune. But how? How can you be immune to a fake hoax? I personally think this might be an attempt to get a sympathy vote because this nigga lie about lying. So at this point, it seems like the only person we can trust is Claudia Conway. You know who that is? She's a 15-year-old, the daughter of former White House counsel Kelly Ann Conway. She is single-handedly bringing down the Trump crime family, bringing them to their knees. And no lie, it's almost better than that extra $600 pandemic bread. Well, almost. Well, apparently her TikTok speaks the truth and that's causing national security issues because we all know how this administration feels about the truth. Ugh. What? You've caused so much disruption. Disruption? You with lied about your fucking mother about COVID? No, no mom. About COVID? It's how I miss, it's how I interpreted, interpreted it. it? You, you're taping. COVID? Yes, COVID, bitch. You know, that thing that done killed over 200,000 folk. Ugh. Anyway, truth be told, the vice president debate between VP Pence and my HU fly girl Kamala was like watching paint dry until... <laughs>
know what flies is attracted to. You know, I'm convinced VP Pence is a robot. I mean, he didn't feel that. That bug was there for like two and a half minutes. He might be a clone. You know, at the very least, he nasty for coming to work with Pink Eye. Look at that. Disgusting. Ooh. No wonder she was behind plexiglass shield. She should have been behind a brick wall. <laughs> anyway, Netflix better chill because they are being sued for promotion of lewd visual material depicting children for streaming a movie called Cuties. Netflix allegedly promoted, and I quote, the lewd exhibition of the genitals of a partially clothed child younger than 18. What? The criminal indictment also says the movie offers no serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. Wow. There was actually a whole canceled Netflix movement when the movie first premiered, and Netflix tried to defend cuties, saying it is social commentary against the sexualization of young children. Y'all know y'all need to stop. Damn, Netflix, y'all acting like y'all didn't get y'all stimulus or PPE. I swear, if I wasn't on my 12th fake email to get that free 30-day Netflix trial, I would cancel y'all ass. Okay, but now y'all should be ready for a little reality check, mic check, one, two. Before he was a shark, Damon John was an independent business owner trying to get FUBU, his FUBU clothing line, off the ground. But now he's paying it forward with his latest initiative called Black Entrepreneur's Day, giving small business owners $25,000 to help jumpstart their business. Now he got Shaq, Jamie Foxx, Gabrielle Union, and LL Cool J all on board. It's going to live stream October 24th with musical performances by Chance the Rapper. Speaking of Chance... He's claiming McDonald's did him dirty. Now, Black Twitter chimed in like, what ha happened? Then Chance responded saying Mickey D's was too cheap to pay him for a Super Bowl commercial back in 2018, so they hired a fake me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, Brian, why are we doing a story on Chance again? I thought Tory said he was irrelevant. On a scale of 1 to 10, how, how relevant we talking? Are we talking 8, 9, like 10? What? How irrelevant, you know, it's levels to this shit. We just gotta, all right, all right. And the ROC is coming to TV so everybody can smell what The Rock is cooking because Dwayne Johnson just announced it's a go on a new autobio sitcom on NBC called Young Rock. I kind of imagine it's going to be like a everybody hates Chris just with more muscles and, you know, thicker eyebrows. Got three actors playing The Rock between the ages of 10, 15, and 20, and none of them will be Kevin Hart. All right, although, wait a minute, Kevin does fit the height requirement of the 10-year-old. <laughs> but seriously, big congrats going out to Kevin. His wife just had another COVID baby girl. Oh, congratulations. And Kelly Rowland is also the latest celeb to announce she's pregnant at 40 with baby number two. Oh, every time I hear a pregnancy announcement, I just think to myself, better them than me. Quick reminder, follow me on IG, Steph Lover 100, and my YouTube page, The Real Steph Lover, for more breaking news and exclusive interviews. Right now, let's get up to date with what's going on in white people news. Ow! Legendary rocker Eddie Van Halen passed away this week from throat cancer at the age of 65. Uh, he battled the disease for 10 years. And even if you don't listen to rock music, you know who Eddie Van Halen is, especially if you love Michael Jackson. Um, Eddie did the iconic guitar solo at the end of MJ's classic joint, Beat It. I'm telling you, Google it right now. You're gonna... Yeah, 2020, got another one. I'm speechless. Moving right along. Cheers is going out, excuse me, uh, to Rebel Wilson from Pitch Perfect fame. Yeah. She pulled the Jennifer Hudson and dropped the hundo, then snatched up her hair. And I'm not talking about T.I. daughter. To the Ann House of Bush family. That's right. <laughs> she got a hair. <laughs> uh, you know, he's worth a couple of billy. I see you, Rebel. I got you. I see you, what you doing. Stacking them coins. So speaking of coins, Mariah, she got a few. And last week we covered Mariah's new book before it dropped, The Meaning of Mariah Carey. 
And after further review, it has come to everybody's attention that she's talking about all her great loves, Nick Cannon, and sexual encounters, Derek Jeter, but no mention of her latest fiance, her last fiance. Remember him, James Packer? Which raised eyebrows to which Mimi, in typical diva fashion, responded, and I quote, we didn't have a physical relationship. If it was a relationship that mattered, then it's in the book. Yeah, I threw some sauce on it. But say what now? Mimi got engaged? <laughs> what well, I'm busting it, why? Girl, you need to write a book about how to do that. Now that's some real MVP shit right there. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to the basics with a little celebrity flex. Time to ah ah, you already know. Legendary lifestyle guru, B. Smith's husband, Dan Gatsby's, try to follow, White girlfriend took off and left him, and he mad as a Trump supporter at a BLM rally. Well, calm as a mofo, when you move your girlfriend into the house you share with your wife that was slowly dying from Alzheimer's and act like she cool with it, you think? This news has me so distressed. I mean, I'm so worried about Trey Songz. I heard he got the COVID. Oh, my God. Trey, call me. Uh, Y'all thought I was tripping about a white girl leaving stupid over there? No, nah, I'm just tight that she ain't robbed his ass on her way out the way he did B. Smith last few months. Anyhow, Will Smith might have a lot more in common with his bad boy character, Michael Lowry, if IG shouts or clues, because folks are speculating the Fresh Prince had enough of his entanglement. Mm-hmm. I meant to do that with Jada and has been low key distancing himself. He didn't even wish her a happy birthday, but had plenty of time to wish his homeboy Alfonso a happy birthday just a few days later. Yeah, we know this. I don't know, Jada, that wop out here single, the stallion single, and who don't love a rich corny nigga with jokes? <laughs> what? What happened? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got some late breaking news. Hold tight, hold tight. Seems as if Tory Lanez, all five foot tree of him, just got indicted felony assault charges in the Meg the Stallion shooting. I mean, it only took, what, 12 weeks or so, but at least it happened. Um, at first, he was, they were mulling over the charges, but yeah, it looks like he got that felony assault with a firearm against him, and now he got a few more charges. That's what happened when you don't protect the black woman. You dig? All right. Now is the perfect time to get into one of my classic interviews. Once again, Mr. North Carolina. Peter ah! Pablo, Peter Pablo, hey, hey, so talk to me. You made the official anthem of North Carolina. I was there, Nick. I was there. I was there on the <laughs> the bit. I was there on the remix. I, I remember when Tim gave you that beat, and you was highly upset. Very upset. It was like this nigga that gave Aaliyah fire. He gives Missy fire, and he gives me this step. Listen, and I was like. What you gonna do, nigga? Maybe, maybe he gave you the starter beat. <laughs> That's exactly what he gave me. He gave me a let me see if you were there with Timberland beat. But like, that was that was a test of beat, huh? No, I I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if it was or was um it worked though. Shit. I made it work. Damn right. I, you did. In my mind, it was a competition. It was I made myself believe that if I didn't make this record work, no other record would work. That's all, that's facts too. You know that, right? Cause at the time, Tim was so goddamn hot. He was, nobody was slowing down that train. Yeah. He'd, have, he'd have kept on choo-chooing down the track. Wouldn't Please it? believe. When did you realize that that song was big? Did you know it as soon as you finished recording it or did you feel it a little bit after like, yo, this shit got legs, what's up? I think when I went to Germany and uh, we performed in front of like 2 million people wow. at this beat festival. And um, I walked out on stage and everybody started singing a song. And <laughs> I completely forgot the goddamn words. I didn't even, <laughs> and these people is yelling and screaming, North Carolina, come on and raise up. I'm like, 
my DJ looked at me like, bro, you okay? I mean, <laughs> no, I'm not. Even know, they don't even know English, right? They but they knew English. all the words. But they knew and no they know this whole damn song. Like, they, they, I, I, was, I was overwhelmed and overjoyed. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, I have yeah. done something. That, uh, Michael Jordan reached out to you about North Carolina. You bumped into him. He said something like that. I remember you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, he, he, he kind of gave you the eye. Right, I see what you yeah, did. Yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. He gave me the eye. Right. He gave me the eye. Right. Like, you know, um, we never really had an extensive conversation because every time, I mean, you can't never catch Michael Jordan. You somewhere. ain't catching Mike nowhere. You ain't gonna catch Michael Jordan somewhere where he just, you know, sitting down at the pool. <laughs> it ain't none of that, right? So, um, but uh, that yeah, that was real big for him to, you know, to, to give me that head nod like, hey, you did that, you know? So it felt real good, man. So you being on Jive, um, is that how you got to do goodies with uh, Sierra? They kind of hooked that up or did you hook that up with your management? How did that come uh, up? I think, uh, I think it was- Cause you were the bigger artist at the time. You kind of put her on by even being on that song. Let's keep it a buck. Don't nobody want to keep it a buck, though, Steph. Don't nobody keep it a buck. I keep to the guy when it's on a piece, Pablo. When I only got twenty dollars, I keep nobody, it a buck. Nobody wants to keep it a buck when it comes to Petey Pablo. But Petey Pablo is humble enough. Yeah. Like I'm doing a documentary right now called "When They See Me," mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and that and what that says is everybody loves me to death when they see me. Right. Oh shit. That you know, sounds like me, nigga. We need to do a part two. You know, with me it's in it. yeah. Out of sight, it's it's really out of sight, out of mind with me. But people try to push me out of their minds. It feels like at times. I mean, you know, sometimes I could be bugging, but at the same time, I mean, I know this to be true because of all the things that go on around me that I'm not included in. Right. That's but a little. Yeah. I don't say nothing. I don't get upset with nobody. I don't bash nobody because I've already been blackballed for some reason. You think so? I, I, I had to be, because they realized that I, I wasn't a fool from the beginning. The mm -hmm. industry realized, and I'm not gonna put it on one, one particular set of people. I'm just gonna say the industry period. They realized that I wasn't, you know, a Uncle Tom. I wasn't a yes man. I wasn't mm -hmm. a, oh, we gonna get, we gave this little country boy some money, so he gonna do what the hell we tell him. To. No, we're not doing that. Ain't it? And, you know, didn't you, and didn't you get your deal rapping in the man's bathroom? In the bathroom. Yeah, I did my research, nigga. I'm not taking anything from the younger generation or from the kids, but you're telling me that a person with five and six hit records under their belt is considered old school, and you want to give him five and $6,000 to perform, but a brand new artist that only has one record, one hit. thirty thousand dollars to come in for. All right, I gotta speaking yeah. of hits. I remember you didn't like Freakily. I remember I got a phone call and you was like, Steph, they trying to kill my career. They want to release this Freakily shit. That's not my flow. I'm coming off this goodies, Joe. I, I, what the what? What should I do? And I was like, well, Pete, what can you do? You know what I'm saying? Why did you think that record wasn't gonna fly? Cause that why did you think the record wasn't hit. gonna fly? What what I well, what was it about that record that you didn't love at first? It was very disrespectful. Like it's a it's a it's a good disrespectful, but it's disrespectful. Coming from Raise Up, um, Raise Up was an inspirational record. Um, it was a, a celebrational record. You know, uh, recognizing where I came from. You know, and giving all my people that have never been looked at. And, uh, a spotlight and mm -hmm. I was speaking in churches I was speaking in mm. schools now you want me to put it in your pussy you put it in your ass I'm like come on bro let me tell you how I thought about it like lyrically because I know you a wordsman yeah you know and I thought it was like you dumbing down that's what that's what was hurting you the most that they didn't respect your word play so they wanted you to dumb down to double your dollars that's no, what no, I I, I, I'm, you know what and i mean because i make all types of music you know but um and i knew that that would be a good record for a club and that's why i said okay give me 15 g's and i'll do the record because they're gonna put it on their compilation cool let that bubble how you bubble it you know it was for violet it was for the violators compilation album so i was like okay cool Give me, okay, give me, give, do, give, do something for me, do something for me. But that record went crazy. I'm a person that comes from a similar background, even though he actually came from a different background because he was in college and played football and all this stuff, but he, 
he the individual he was and you know having this people don't people scared to talk to him people scared to deal with him this and this and that but having that mentality i am i've been that type of way so i'm like look if you give some somebody everybody needs somebody to talk to so everybody need you know an opportunity to be a hundred with somebody Right. And that's what I sat down and I talked to Sugar about. It. I was like, bro, you and me can be brothers forever. Yeah, but the first time you play wrong, put one hand on the table, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to walk away. You know, I ain't going to talk mad about you. We ain't going to have to go into no beef. It's, it is what it is. But you deserve somebody that you can sit down and really be merry and night with. Like everybody knew Sugar. Like, mm -hmm. so when I went in, I'm Petey Pablo, AKA Apache. So when I came in, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna set this street thing aside and I'm gonna give you a brother that you can really talk to. And for uh, for almost eight years, I mean, I was the one that he could confide in. You know, like I said, I broke bread at his mom's house, you know, played with, with his children. You know, his children called me Uncle Pete. Uh, you know, some stuff happened and um, I just wasn't cool with it, you know? And- um, We'll leave it at that, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. We'll save the rest for the book and the movie and the, uh, the oh, yeah, yeah, series. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you for more exclusive interviews and uncensored news, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, The Real Stuff Lover. And on that note, we up out of here. Got my thing thing back. All right, before we go, big shout out going out to my producer, B Brown. He told me to remind y'all, download that Uncensored Network TV app. Have a good weekend. Oh, it's Columbus Day, or should I say Indigenous People Day, because the only Christopher we acknowledge is Wallace. Yeah. Have a fly weekend.